time. All right, so thank you for hopping on live. If you are checking out the recording, thank you for checking out the recording as well. Um, we are excited to kick off the month of August with a very special guest speaker. Um, we have Brig there it is the crack. Um, we have Brigida Linford on tonight, um, and she is going to be sharing with us about leadership, uh, which I'm very very excited about. Um, Brigida is someone who I've definitely looked up to. Um, we share the same upline in Scotty, which is really awesome. And we've gotten to work together recently and um, it's been really a privilege to learn from her and to, um, to be able to collaborate. It makes a big difference when you are able to collaborate with other leaders in this business. Um, so just a little bit about her. She is a 15 star diamond in her first business center, but also a four star and one star in her second and third business center, which is pretty incredible. Um, the leader she is mentoring. She's a success club all-star legend, which if you do not know what that means, that means that you have have achieved success club and helped at least three people for 24 consecutive months. So that's pretty amazing too. She is part of the legacy club, which again, if you're on here and are not familiar with that, it is, it means that um, with her years of coaching, she has earned over a million dollars, which is incredible. And she is also a leadership award recipient, which is so appropriate that she's speaking to us tonight about leadership. So Brigida, you may take it away. Thank you for spending your time with us tonight. Well, thank you guys so much for having me on, Michelle. I'm so honored to be here. And Thank you all for making the time to be here. I appreciate that you were willing to make this a priority. And I, I love this topic. I love talking about things that will help you as a leader. And I do think that there's a little bit of a misconstruct, a misperceived notion. I'm not sure the exact word I'm looking for it when it comes to leadership within Beachbody because we tend to associate it with rank. And we look at people who are diamonds and we're like, oh, they're my leaders, or this is a leader because of the rank that they're at. But one thing I've noticed is that a lot of people kind of stumble into this accidental leadership. And I think when you have that, you have the opportunity to lead here, but that doesn't necessarily always mean that you're having the influence on your team or that your team is respecting you or looking up to you and that you're able to influence them to do things that they wouldn't normally do. And so a lot of the things I'm going to share with you are things that you might be forgetting that are going to have an impact on the influence that you have on other people. And here's the reality. I do believe that uh, there are people who are naturally born leaders. It just comes maybe easy for them. But I've also really learned that these are all things that you can develop and that you can work on. Uh, just by a little way of background on how I got into this and whatnot, I do not feel that I was always a <laughs> really someone who you would look at and pinpoint as she has potential to be a leader or she is someone who can influence other people. I, um, I grew up with a lot of depression and it just dominated my life so much. And so by the time I was in high school and going into college, I had a hard time even making eye contact with people. I would just look at the ground because I felt like everybody could see right through me. I felt like I was just gonna bring people down because I myself was struggling so much with, you know, all of these mental things in my mind. And I just didn't know how to help myself. And so of course, when this idea of Beachbody came along, my reaction was, who am I? Like, who am I to ever lead anybody? Nobody would ever respect me or look up to me or see me as somebody who could help them because for the majority of my life, I haven't even been able to help myself. And I do remember uh, praying about this opportunity because I kept being drawn to it, but I was just petrified. I was so scared of being a beach body coach, but it's something that you know, I was following my coach, Scotty Hobbs, on social media for four months, 
before I ever even allowed him to know who I was. <laughs> so I, I was praying about this though and thinking about it and continuing to watch Scotty's journey. And I remember one day where the realization came to me in such a strong way that there would be people that I could help that nobody else could reach. And that if I didn't do this, they would never get their chance. And that felt like this heavy responsibility of like, I have to, I have to do this. I have to figure out how to become somebody that other people would look up to and how to become somebody that other people could respect. Because if that's not who I am right now, I've got to figure out how I can, because if there's someone out there who's not getting their chance to live a healthy life that they feel good about, because I never stepped into that position, that place where I could help them. Like, I didn't want to live with that. And I'm here to tell you, it's the same thing for you. I don't feel that there's too many Beachbody coaches ever. I think we could have all of the Melanie Metros in the world. And yet there's still people who will never join us because they are needing Nina or they need Tiffany or Shayna or Michelle. Uh, it doesn't matter like that there's an Ashley Molstead who maybe was in a magazine and people are aware of who she is. They need you and you're the one who would inspire them to take action. So I think it's very important for us to do the things that we can to become a strong leader, okay? So here are the things that you might be forgetting that are going to keep you from having influence with the people that are on your team and in your challenge groups. Now, a lot of these things are character-based and that's because leadership begins with the inner person. And it's that sense, like people can sense your character. And so I think a really great place to start is to write down all of the traits that you would want in your ideal coach. You know, who do you want to work with? Whether that's, okay, I want to work with someone who's very passionate. I want to work with someone who's very consistent. I want to work with someone who's very kind and compassionate and positive. Like write down all of those characteristics. And then I want you to rate yourself on how you are showing up in those areas. And so this can, that will be your homework. I'm not going to give you time to do it right now. But if you want to make a note, to do that at some point, that is where you're going to start when it comes to identifying what you can work on. Now, what I think, I've got 10 points for you guys today. And these are things that people forget to do when it comes to being a leader. And the first thing is they forget to lead by example. Now, people are gonna do whatever they see you doing. And so you've gotta make sure that you're walking the walk. I remember this phrase that I heard on a national wake up call as a new coach and it like haunted me and I loved, I loved it so much. I wrote it down on a sticky note and it was on my computer for years and years and years until I moved. But it said, if my team did what I did today, would they be successful? I loved thinking about that. And I remember in my mind, I played this little, I, I, I muted myself on accident. As I was saying, I played this little game in my mind of imagining that I had a reality TV like camera and hidden cameras and, and just a whole team that was following me everywhere I went. And because I knew that what I do in private shows up publicly, you know, and I feel that really helped me when it came to both building the business, but then also making those changes with my health and fitness and being like, Everybody can see that I'm a health coach and I'm not <laughs> following the meal plan or I'm not actually getting my workout in or all of these different things. So that mentality of they're watching me <laughs> is what really helped me be so consistent and being like, I can't even show my face and tell people to do these, like these 10 daily activities if I'm not doing them myself. I mean, when I first started, we didn't have an activity tracker, but there were coaches that would share like, these are the 10 things I do every day on my business. And, and so I would go down that list and we didn't have stories and things where it was more easy to share what you were doing behind the scenes. Now you can kind of create your reality TV show, but I did that back then even of just feeling like everyone can see what I'm doing. So I'm going to make sure I'm living with integrity and 
behind the scenes doing the very things that I'm expecting them to do for them to reach their goals. Okay, so it's so important to do. Now, the second thing is to, that coaches forget to do is they forget to go the extra mile. They look at, okay, well, people expect me to check my challenge groups. I'm, I'm going to do that and then I'm done. I mark it off my checklist, I'm done. I've got a post, okay, I'll make a post, check that off and then I'm done. But here's the thing, I feel leadership begins on that extra mile. So that whole experience and ability, like uh, that's where that is developed. Like, the, like we look to leaders who have a lot of experience. We look to leaders who have a high capacity and ability to get things to happen. And that comes by going above and beyond what is expected. So I love the phrase and mindset of my standards for myself are higher than what others may set for me or even my standards for myself are higher than what I expect of other people. So if I'm telling someone else like, okay, <laughs> these are activities to hit success club 10, but I know I'm gonna go above and beyond that. Like I know that I'm gonna go the extra mile and send more invites for new coaches to come in and just ask yourself that question, that question of how can I go above and beyond and really excel in this like in this situation. So I brought up the example of challenge groups and okay, yes, it's great to, to comment and to make sure you're consistent in showing up on there. But what did you kind of get a feeling that someone was struggling maybe a little bit? Could you send them a voice message? Or when you are checking your feed, are you making sure that you see the post of the people who are in your challenge groups and kind of showing up as a friend and being like, oh, this person had a birthday and making sure I'm connecting with them or, you know, that they just went on a trip and I'm showing up as a friend and messaging them and saying, hey, I just wanted to see how you're doing and how you're feeling. And I noticed you were still checking in, but you're in Disneyland and just showing up like <laughs> a human and really going above and beyond to let them know that I see you and I really truly care about you as a human and as an individual. And like going above and beyond, not just only commenting on their post. So it's the same thing with our team as well, but finding those opportunities, asking yourself, how can I go above and beyond in this opportunity and not just post, but post with a purpose, not just show up, but make sure that this is a quality exposure and putting myself out there. Another thing that coaches forget that will help them with their leadership is that they forget that this is a people business. I think especially as people are moving into some of the higher leadership levels, they can tend to automate things too much and go on autopilot. And so this kind of relates to what I was sharing before, whether that's making meaningful comments to people, private messages, showing up as a friend, showing up with kindness and compassion and letting people know like, I'm interested in you. I, I care about you. I want to make sure you get what you wanted out of this and that you are so happy and that you see success. I think it's so important for us to remember the hierarchy of needs and that, you know, when it comes to psychology, we have certain basic needs. And some of those first basic needs are to know that we are loved and know that we are like cared for. And after that, then we have a, a, above that are the needs of passion and having a purpose in our lives. So what that kind of tells me is we can't even get to the passion and the purpose of why you're here and, and what you are meant to do as a coach. If you don't know that I care about you, if you don't know that, like, I, I see you as my friend, I see you as a human and I, I care about what's on your heart. I care about where you've been and the experiences that you've had. So you have to touch a person's heart before you can ask for their hand and try to guide them. You're here to serve people. And I think that's such a noble thing that people trust us and that people can work with anyone, but they chose to work with you. But people are not gonna follow a leader that they don't feel values them. And we all just need that. We need to know that people see us. Um, I loved, loved Kim Carver's talk during summit where he shared that there were these different chickens and they, I'm going to butcher the, the story exactly, but the gist of it, gist of it, 
<laughs> I can say this word. The gist of it is that there were these different groups of chickens and they were studying how they, they thrive in different situations, whatnot. And there were particular chickens that were under the care of one person and they were the ones that succeeded the most in all of the different tests. And what they realized is that that person who was taking care of that group of chickens was taking a little bit more time to nurture them and to speak kindly to them and to show compassion and show love. And there's so many studies like that. I've seen, I've heard of studies with orphans and how they don't develop in the same way if they're not being picked up and held and cared for. And you guys, those are the people in our, in our care. You know, they need to see the human connection with us and know that we genuinely care. And so, you know, it's interesting that I've, I've never been a person who does high numbers of recruiting and high numbers of anything, but the people that are, are there, I take care of them and I nurture them. And so I hope that that's inspiring to hear that it's, taking care of the people that you are entrusted with and that will have a huge impact um, on your business and the result and all of that. But more importantly, the result that they are getting and the satisfaction that you feel, okay? All right, uh, the fourth thing that people forget to do is they forget to make things easier for their team. They forget to add value to their team. Okay, so I think some leaders kind of come in and they're like, okay, here's all my people and these are the people I need and they're gonna help me get to this rank and this rank and that's not what this is about. You are here to help other people reach their goals and you're here to help them live the life that they want. I'll never forget when I was going to get a new car and we got to the dealership and my husband had in, in his mind exactly the car that he wanted to get. And it's something that had been on his dream board and he knew the color, like all of it. He had, I mean, exactly what he wanted. And we were ready to purchase like right away. And we walked in and it was so clear to me that the car salesman had it in his mind what he wanted to sell to us. But he was like, why would you spend money on this when you can get this one? And I don't know if it was just his personal preference or if they were running some kind of promotion and he would have gotten a kickback for selling that kind of car, but it was comical because I was like, he hasn't really asked us what we want. And even when we kind of guided him, like well, these, this is what we're trying to look for. He was like immediately telling us why that wasn't even good. And we needed to want this instead. And I just think that thought that was so interesting because how many times do we do the same thing? Do we look at people and we're like, oh, she's gonna, she's diamond potential. I want her to be a diamond. Or I want this person I know like is going to win the beach body challenge and they've got a hundred pounds to lose and this and that. But we've got to slow down and find out what our team wants. What do they want? And help them get what they want. It's not about like, oh, I've got the perfect fit for you. <laughs> I can see that you are gonna be a diamond and, or even an established like existing coach. You can look at them and be like, oh, they already have three coaches and two emeralds on one side. They could easily get over to diamond. Like, let's do that. And like that person right now, what they care about is they really want to lose 20 pounds. But you're like so focused on diamond, let's get you to diamond when what they need is they need to lose 20 pounds. So slow down. Your job is to help people get what they want. And it doesn't matter like whatever is in your head about what you think that they need. Just like that job of the car salesman, his job was to find out what I wanted and give me exactly what I wanted. Don't try to tell me what I should want. I know, I already know what I want. <laughs> and I think the people you're working with, they already know what they want as well, okay? So, Making it easier for your team is gonna be helping them map out what it takes for them to reach their goals. Of course, as I said, you need to find out what their goals are. But then when it comes to making it easier for people, that is coming from just adding value to people. And so, you know, if you get questions a lot of, 
how do you, how do I do this? How do I do that? You know, you can make a quick video or find a video for someone and that's gonna make it easier for them. If it comes down to a ton of people asking um, for, like I'm trying to think of all the different scenarios. I think we kind of know like basically that if people are asking for a certain thing, you fill that need, right? Um, as far as adding value to people, we add value to our team by seeing their potential, right? So that is truly adding value to other people by seeing their potential, reminding them of what they're capable of. We also add value by making ourselves more valuable. So me sitting here reading a personal development, development book, that is totally adding value to my team because this is making me better. We also add value by relating to what other people are valuing um, and getting to know them. So I love this quote that inexperienced leaders are quick to lead before knowing anything about the people that they intend to lead. But the mature leader listens, learns, and then they lead, right? So honestly, I think that is such a good thing to remember when you have new coaches coming in that before you're quick to be like, okay, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to teach them everything that I know. I'm going to get to, I'm just going to like take them to that shiny new car that I know is going to be the very best because I'm convinced it's the very best car. Listen to them, learn, and find out what things they value, and then you're able to lead them in the best way. All right. Okay, number five, as far as things that you forget. You forget to get on the phone when times are tough. Never, ever, ever have hard conversations through text. I have learned this the hard way, unfortunately. <laughs> so learn from my mistake. Um, but I'll tell you that it's a really actually a huge blessing when hard moments come because that's your time to shine. Now, hard moments are going to be a plenty. A hard moment can be when maybe someone had their feelings hurt. A hard moment can be when Beachbody makes a mistake. Is that an opportunity for you to shine? Absolutely. <laughs> and like, relate to them and, and be a sounding board for them and kind of help them see a potential avenue of way out of it. I remember when they were all like, you know, when there were times when 21 day fix containers were on back order or when there's shipping errors and, and things are delayed, uh, you know, there's always opportunities that Beachbody has where they make mistakes <laughs> or do things wrong. So that's an opportunity for us to shine and to go above and beyond with our people and really help them know like, I'm here, I am taking care of you. I remember always working as a waitress and whenever the, the cooks made a mistake, I looked at that as like, this is my time to go above and beyond and to really shine and use this as an opportunity to really take care of my people. So I was like, how can I make this right? You know, so getting on the phone and asking them that question, how can I make this right? You know, with a client, maybe their product's delayed. How can I make this right? What can I do for you? How can I take care of you? And so I feel like that's a really great opportunity that a lot of coaches don't take advantage of. And they kind of maybe shy away when times get tough. Now, when times get tough, sometimes that might be that you've made a mistake and maybe someone's pointing it out to you. So those can be uncomfortable situations, but I wanna just give a little bit of advice. If you've ever had someone come to you pointing out the things that maybe you're coming up short on. The first thing I want you to remember is to not be defensive. Again, this is your opportunity to shine. This is your opportunity to grow as a leader and you're gonna miss that opportunity if you're being defensive, okay? The other thing is to look for the grain of truth. I think we can all admit that when we receive criticism, it only like, if, there's always a little bit of truth at least a little bit. And they might have a lot of it that's blown out of proportion and grasping at straws, but there's gonna be at least a little grain of truth. You will benefit by identifying what that grain of truth is, all right? The other thing is just to make the necessary changes and then take the high road. So there's no need, like if, it's easy when you feel attacked to feel like, <laughs> I need to like attack this person back. 
but take the high road, say thank you. Thank you for bringing this to my attention. I'm gonna work on that and I can see how I can be better. Thank you so much. And what can I do to make this right? What can I do to earn your trust back? What can I do to make sure that you know I care? And uh, you're doing this on the phone, right? <laughs> Don't ever do it through written text because things can be like the same sentence can be re read like 15 different ways. <laughs> so uh, don't make that mistake, all right? Now, another thing that leaders forget to do is they forget to be relatable. It is so important that you are mapping things out in a way that people can duplicate what you have done, right? So we kind of talked about this, like setting up your team for success and that kind of scenario. But I want to specify the relatability of what you're doing and the du making sure it's duplicatable. I'll never forget working with one of my up and coming diamonds. And she was really struggling with her coaches going off and doing their own challenge groups. And she's like, everybody just loves being in my challenge group. And we kind of like talked about it more. And I come to find out that She's writing these posts, waking up early and writing these personalized posts for the day, like, you know, the post of the day and sharing like what she was learning and her personal development and some things that were going on in her life and like giving them this assignment. And it was like so well done that none of her coaches thought they could ever duplicate what she was doing. And so all of her coaches were like, I can never run a challenge group outside of yours because I can't do what you, you're doing. I also remember a coach in the network and he was incredible at making these videos and he was just so good and so good. And the unfortunate thing about it is I saw him shining, but I didn't see anyone that he was leading shine also. And you know, there's always like the speculations from my perspective, I couldn't help but wonder if it's because coaches looked at him and said, I could never do what he was doing. I could never create, I could never create that. I think one of the greatest gifts Scotty did for me is he was so relatable and he kept it so simple. So I looked at him and I had so much belief in myself. So I was like, I could totally do what he's doing. I could totally and, and then in my mind too, I'm like, and I can make it better. You want your coaches thinking that about you, right? <laughs> I could totally do what she's doing and make it better. So just kind of think about that as far as like not doing all these like big, fancy, crazy things. Like it's such a blessing for you to keep it simple. It's such like a blessing for your team and for you to remind them like, Listen, at this stage, this is the, you know, because we get better and better at things, of course, and not that you need to dumb yourself down. But what I'm saying too is to remind people also of where you were at and the results you got and how you shared it at the beginning, but yet you still got this result. And so, kind of like allowing people to see a path to success through you and through the journey that you've had. Okay. All right, another thing that leaders forget to do. You guys have heard of the Pareto principle, right? Of the 80-20 rule. And what that means is 20% of your people will produce 80% of the results. Um, and that's kind of, boy, if I, I didn't put a bookmark, bookmark on the, I was reading this book and kind of reviewing it before this call. And I talked about it and I should have put a little tab so I could share this specific readings with you from the scientists. So you don't think I'm making this up. <laughs> but they talk about just, uh, you know, 20% of the roads carry 80% of the traffic. Like it's a 20, 80 thing on all the things. And it's gonna be the same thing with your business. That 20% of the coaches will bring in 80% of the income. Now the unfortunate part of that, about that is that many times the loudest coaches are the 80% that aren't doing anything. <laughs> and so leaders, one of the mistakes that they make is they forget to work with the top 20%. They work with the bottom 80 or the bottom 20 even. So make sure that you are not uh, just responding to the loudest people, but responding, reaching out to your people who are producing the best results and see how you can help add value to them. 
Okay, so you are taking them, adding value to them so that they can continue getting better and better and better, right? So there are leaders who attract followers, um, but you want to be developing those leaders. And developing the leaders is when you are treating people differently. Unfortunately, there's this thing in society where we think we need to treat everybody the same, but you shouldn't. You should not because everyone has different needs. And some people uh, are in a position where they're ready to take the advice and counsel that you have. And some, some people are not. They, they're just wanting someone to hear them complain. And so for you to develop leaders, you've got to be reaching out to your top 20%, seeing what you can do to guide them and to help them, okay? All right. Another thing that leaders forget to do is they forget to be enthusiastic and model enthusiasm day in and day out. I loved this quote from Eleanor Doan. And she said, you cannot kindle a fire in any other heart until it is burning within your own. I love that. You cannot kindle a fire in any other heart until it's burning within your own. I think it's so important for us that we, if we're wanting to attract these like-minded people to our team and we wanna motivate other people to achieve, that we do whatever it takes for us to create that fire within us. Now, depending on where you're at and what's going on in your life, that can look differently. But I feel there's a few general things that really help people to kindle that fire. Some of them are to keep a book of truth or a book of proof, I'm sorry. A book of proof is something that kind of, and I'm gonna give credit to Moira Kusaba um, because that's who I learned about it from. But a book of proof is uh, when you are setting goals and then you are finding evidence in your day-to-day -day, day -day life that those goals are coming to pass, that they are for you and that they're going to happen. So you're looking for evidence of like, here's proof. Here's proof that I'm on the right track. Here's proof that of course it's gonna happen. So when we prime our brains to look for proof that these things are gonna happen, of course you're gonna be more enthusiastic. Of course you're gonna be more excited about things. So it's kind of like a gratitude list, right? The more you focus on it, the more you have things that you're grateful for. So I was pulling out this planner from Moira Saba, like the Rise Up one, and she has that book of proof in the back. So I write down in there my, my evidence that my goals are happening for me so I can remind myself that like, of course I'm going to succeed. Look at all these things that are proof happening every single day. I am destined to succeed. <laughs> so it definitely makes a huge difference. Another thing that I feel makes a big difference in kindling that fire is to get on things like the national wake up call. Now I know some coaches who are like, well, I listened to it afterwards and I do too. Um, Half the year I'm on Pacific time zone, half the year I'm on mountain, which kind of means half the year it's convenient for me to get on live. The other half I'm driving carpool. <laughs> so I listen to the recording as well. But here's the thing, don't skip the recognition. Please do not skip the recognition because that is a book of proof happening right before your eyes. That like, look at all these people advancing. Look at all these people. They are succeeding. It's a reminder to you of what is for you and what is possible. And those stories, the stories that come on that national wake-up call, I always think about what if that was my person? Like what, what if I had been the one who had followed up with her 12 times? Because you hear the person who's like, I told her no 12 times. And it was this one post that like inspired me to do it. I always think about that person. I am who's following me who needs a follow up from me 12 times or who like, you know, they got it, they heard about it at the bus stop and they were just talking to the friendly mom next door. Like it just always reminds me of how many people out there need exactly what I have to share. So I love those stories on the national wake up call. We just had summit go back and listen to all of the recordings that you can from that because that's another huge shot in the arm when it comes to kindling the fire of enthusiasm. Another one comes with our Super Saturdays, uh, Super Weekends, I guess we call them now. As you're hearing other people talk, talking and you're, the, hopefully this time we'll be able to be in person and, and rub shoulders and have that energy. 
but those are all things that really kindle your fire. I will tell you that also just plain engaging with your people, engaging with your challenge groups and really getting to know them and getting to know your coaches, like that always fuels my fire because I hear them telling me like how this is helping them and how they've never worked out on a vacation. They just went on vacation and they actually worked out for the first time. And that always like impacts me and makes me feel so good to know like, oh my gosh, like this is literally changing people's lives. Like I need to get on and invite more people and like make sure I, other people have their opportunity because everybody should be working out when they travel. Like, why would you want to feel crummy when you travel? Like, oh my gosh, <laughs> we need to share this with more people. So I just feel staying connected is going to make a huge impact for you to rekindle it, keeping that fire of live of like how important it is that of what we do every single day, when you automate things and all of that, it's just so easy to get disconnected. And then you forget how important it is what, of what we're doing and how much this is impacting other people's lives. All right, another, oh, and then I also wanted to share this. Now, I, I share this and I realize that I can be so much better, but it is something I think I used to do really, really well. And again, I needed to be so much better about this, but doing this in your team page and essentially like reminding your own team, what a freaking amazing opportunity that this is. So treating your team page almost like a ongoing coach open house. Like, I think we've all done those Facebook groups where it's like a coach open house and you're like telling everybody like, this is why this is so amazing and you should do it. And here's a coach story and here's a, um, you know, this product and why it's so amazing, like your coach team page or like your upline team page, like treat that like an ongoing coach uh, open house for your existing coaches, because there are so many people who are technically signed up as a coach who are not taking advantage of this opportunity. And it's so easy to be like constantly filling that team page of like, oh my gosh, you guys, like, here's this success story. And can you believe that we get to do this? And this is so amazing. And this is why I love coaching. Like, ah, and sharing that in there, like that inspires people who are currently already on your team. So that's a good piece of advice. All right, two more things. Another thing that I feel makes a difference in uh, that a lot of people forget is they forget to share their vision. Now, uh, it's important that people know where you're going. It's important that they know what your vision is. Um, I heard this like written out in a book that a strong leader is hard to find. You know, these strong leaders, they have influence, they make things happen, they can see and seize opportunities. They know how to attract, enlist and rally people. And there's just not maybe as many of those people. So sometimes they're hard to find, but once you find a leader, drawing them in is difficult because they kind of have that entrepreneur mindset and they want to do their own thing. So if you were to try to recruit one of those kind of already strong leaders, you have to know where you're going. You have to plan, have a plan on how you're going to get there because what you're planning, what you're doing has to be more compelling than what they're already doing. That's totally capable because I'm sorry, the most amazing person on a great path, like they are missing out if they're not already, if they're not doing Beachbody as well. <laughs> so I just think this elevates everybody's lives and amplifies the joy that they can feel and just makes everybody's lives better. So it doesn't matter what kind of strong leader that they are, like this can make it better, but you have to make sure you're sharing a vision so clearly on your social media over and over and over again, constantly talking about what it is that you see is capable in this business, where you see yourself, how you're going to get there, how you're going to help other people get there. I will tell you, that's how Scotty got me. He was so freaking clear on his vision and his vision was to pay off his house, be debt free and help other people do the same. And I wanted that more than anything. <laughs> So when I talk about the four month period of me being like, I'm thinking about it, but I'm so like, have so much self doubt. The reason why I kept being pulled back to it as I was like, I want to be debt free. I really want to have a house paid off. Like I want that more than anything. 
like, cause we had lost a home in foreclosure. We had been completely bankrupt, like filing for bankruptcy. And, you know, my husband had gone two years without work and we had lived like, I have a, such a testimony of food storage cause food storage is how I fed my children. Walmart return policy is how I put diapers on them. Like I, uh, really struggled financially. And I woke up with a pit in my stomach, went to bed, sleepless nights with a pit in my stomach, this heaviness on my chest, just so stressed out about money that I was like, we can't live this way. I, and I was like, I cannot ever go through a bankruptcy again. I can never go through a foreclosure again. Like I refuse to put myself back in that situation again, but I didn't know what to do. And so when I saw someone who was so clear on like, I'm going to pay off my house. Who else wants to pay off their house? I was like, oh, like, I'm so in. That's exactly what I want. Like, I definitely want that. And so he was so clear on that. What are you clear on? I was talking to another coach the other day and she was talking about how she wants to help these curvy women like feel good. And it's like, how many curvy women out there are like, I feel so torn because I see this like love your body, embrace who you are, but then you got to be fit. And I, yes, I want someone who's teaching me how to like exercise and make those curves look good and like show my body that I love it through healthy eating, but not from a place of shame. Like that's exactly what I need. Please help me. So like the more you are so clear on your vision and who you are here to help and you talk about that over and over and over again the more that like, you're going to attract really amazing people to your team. So be very clear on what your vision is and talk about it constantly. Make it so clear on where you are going and who you can help get there. Right. Okay. And then the last thing that I want to talk about that people forget, they forget to continue to improve themselves. Now, to my benefit, I struggled with depression. And I say to my benefit because it humbled me enough that it was obvious to me that I needed personal development. Like I had no ego around like learning from other people. I was like, please, all the information, I don't know what I'm doing. <laughs> so I think that was definitely to my benefit. Because sometimes I hear from coaches who are like, oh, I don't struggle with anxiety or I don't struggle with personal, like depression. And so they don't think they need to read books. And I'm like, you are delusional because the books that you're reading, it's not about you. It's also about that person you talk to. I can't even tell you guys how many times I'm reading a book and then I get on a call or I message someone, or I see a post in a challenge group. And I'm like, that is crazy because what I just read is a hundred percent applicable to what this person's saying. And I can make this elaborate comment on their challenge group post and like really actually help them, you know? So it's about improving yourself and making yourself a better person. Again, adding value to yourself so you can be more valuable to the people who've entrusted their journey in your hands. So it makes a huge difference because people are not going to trust leaders who aren't trustworthy. So working on your self-discipline and working on like how you're living your life in private, of course, is going to affect how people feel about you and how they trust you. And, and people don't trust people who are super insecure. And they're just like, uh, they doubt everything that comes out of their mouths. And like, you know, you can just sense those people are really insecure. Like if that's you work on that. Do the things that you need to do to face those inner demons and work out your insecurity because your insecurity is keeping you from showing up for the people who need you. Like you've got to face the things that are holding you back. This is therapy. This is like going to a Tony Robbins seminar. This is going to the workshops and like really facing the snake that is like showing up in your life, not just reading the book that everyone else is reading. Okay. Like I can't even, I consistently do therapy because I know you guys deserve it. Like I know my audience deserves it. Like I'm, I'm in a pretty good place. Like I feel pretty good, but I know that that makes me better. I know me going to therapy every single month helps me like 
address the things I'm not aware of. And there are so many things that you guys see as flaws in me. I'm oblivious to you. I need a therapist to point them out. <laughs> so I like hire her. I hire a life coach, like, because I know the people deserve that from me. And I don't know what I don't know. So continue working on yourself because people need that. People need you to, to be better. They need you to work out your things so that they have their opportunity to shine and to grow under your leadership, okay? So those are my 10 things that make an impact. And I just have a few last reminders for you guys. A few last things. One is that I just wanna remind you guys that your brand new coach doesn't look like a diamond on day one. Nobody looks like a diamond on day one. I didn't look like a diamond on day one. I for sure didn't look like a 15 star diamond on day one or day seven. <laughs> so you give people the benefit of the doubt. You let people, you see the potential in other people. Another thing is that, listen, so many of you guys are such great leaders, but you're not relying on your upline. You're not leaning on them. I was talking to a coach last week and she's, trying so hard on this team page and working on these things. And I was like, you know what I did? I just added everyone to Scotty's page and I added value to Scotty's page. Like I didn't try to do my page and like be the, the person until I had diamonds who could help me. You know what I mean? Like, cause I didn't want to, I couldn't have this one man show. So lean on your upline and don't make it harder for yourself because then you can show up better on the other things, okay? So that's a little personal opinion. Um, and then the other thing I just want to remind you is that no one is going to stay with you forever. Like, well, maybe if you will. <laughs> I shouldn't say no one, but I shouldn't speak in absolutes. Not everyone will stay with you forever. There will be people who are there for a season. And it doesn't mean that you failed if they move on to something different. So I love this, uh, how it was worded in a book that they said, not everyone will take the journey with you. Not everyone should take the journey with you. And not everyone can take the journey with you. But I, I know that everyone comes into my life for a purpose. And I look at like, I have something to share with them and they have something to share with me. And sometimes that only is on the invite call you know, when I get on, I talked to a girl this morning. Um, I prefer to get on a call. So if someone's like, I'm interested, I'm like, great, let's, let's get on a call. So I got on a call with this girl and it was clear that she didn't understand what this, what she was really, what this really was. And, um, but I got off that call knowing I added value to her and I was able to like give her some recommendations of like a few things. And like I pointed her in the direction of this documentary that I had watched and I knew I'm like excited for her to watch that and listen to that. And like, I don't really know if we're going to work together or not, but I felt so good. And I felt so grateful that I had invited her and it made me so excited to invite more people because I know every single person I invite, I'm gonna leave them better than I found them. And I believe everyone who comes onto my team I'm going to leave them better than I found them. And everyone who comes into my challenge group, I'm going to like leave them better than I found them. And so it makes me excited to like help people and bring them on. And if they're only there for a short season of time, I know that they learned what they were supposed to learn. And now they're going, their, their path is something different. Other people's paths will not be just what mine is. So, but I promise that it doesn't mean you've, you've failed or you're not a good leader. If someone that you thought would be there forever is no longer, you know, they canceled maybe their coach account. Just know that that, that's, that happens to everyone. <laughs> I remember my very first return and I didn't, I had not even comprehended that somebody would return Shakeology. Like when I started as good, I was like, didn't, that did not even, I couldn't even comprehend that someone would want it to return it. And I remember being so embarrassed <laughs> that someone returned their bag with Shakeology. And I was like, oh my gosh, like, and just realizing that like, okay, that will happen. It doesn't, it's not a reflection on my abilities as a leader, as a coach. So those are my last little reminders. Now, the very last thing I've shared with you, a lot of different things, 10 different things that people will forget. A few reminders for you. Now you'll probably, I hope have a lot of notes, but I want you to ask yourself a question right now. What is the biggest mistake that I am making? 
and you only get to think of one thing. One thing, what is the biggest mistake that you're making as you look at that list? Because if you focus on just that one thing and shift it and say, okay, I'm going to adjust. I'm not going to keep sabotaging myself by forgetting this thing. I'm going to change. I'm going to do it. And I purposely use the words that you're forgetting, not that you're like, because it's something you can learn. It's something that like, oh, it's being reminded to you. It's being pointed out. You can adjust. You can make changes. And it's, it's within your capacity to adjust in that way. So what is the biggest mistake you're making right now? And how can you change? But I promise you, you guys, that you were here for a reason. You were brought into this for a reason and you're so capable. You're so capable of growing. You're so capable of leading the people that are being brought to you and that you are reaching out to. You're reaching out to them for a reason like, and they need you. So it is so important that you continue to get on calls like this and work on yourself and, and read good books and go to the seminars, listen to the podcast, like all the things that you can do to grow and to love on people it really does matter. It really makes a difference and you matter. So thank you for being on this call. I wish you all the best and I hope that you attack that one big mistake that you are making and you're going to see some amazing results. Thanks guys. Thank you. Thank you, Brigida, so much for spending your time tonight with us and for truly sharing your heart. I hope, oh my gosh, my voice because I didn't talk for a little bit. I hope that all of you have your cup as full as mine right now and your heart as full as mine because I mean, I'm, I was in tears over here as well listening to you. So thank you, Brigida. I appreciate you so much. Thank you for all being on here and I hope you all have a wonderful evening. Bye. Bye everyone.